Hey everybody, so here looking at a Dremel DigiLab 3D45 3D printer. This is at my place of work and I have got an opportunity to experiment with this 3D printer for about the past couple weeks or so and I decided it was um, time to make a video talking about the nice things about this printer and the not so nice things about this printer and why you should not buy it in 2023 or thereafter. So, right now this printer is currently printing a 3D Benchy. It is currently 8 minutes in and I actually used um, software called Flash Print to uh, slice the file for this thing which is the software by FlashForge normally intended for their FlashForge printers and I talk about that in a separate video but I do want to talk about um, the good things about this printer and the not so good things about this printer and the ugly things about this printer so now this thing is typically aimed toward the educator um, these things are marketed for like schools and colleges and things like that and this is actually a community college so there you go um, it's a pretty robust machine. It has a direct drive extruder. Um, you can see that's the unit right there. And of course, we got some third party filament in it, which I'll talk about that here in a moment. The controls do offer a lot of functionality. You can fine tune a lot of different things. Um, it has this RFID system built in to when you use the Dremel filament. You just load the filament in, it auto detects it and it auto applies the needed settings. No having to fine tune and manually set everything, although you can. So it has a uh, glass bed which is removable. The bed operates on the Z axis, so the bed actually goes up to meet the um, nozzle, and as your print progresses layer by layer, it moves down slow but surely. And of course the extruder slash nozzle operates on the X slash Y axis. It's relatively quiet minus the cooling fan. So the fan that you can actually hear right now is that one right there. That's the loud one. So it is kind of noisy when it is printing, although it's not terribly bad. Of course I don't have a decibel meter with me, but you can probably of course hear it. It does have a uh, exhaust fan right here for, um, of course, exhausting air out of the machine. It's enclosed, so that's good for printing ABS and stuff like that. And I should note that the exhaust fan does have a carbon filter on it. This 3D printer offers USB connectivity as well as Wi-Fi and Ethernet network connectivity. It has a built-in 720p webcam. So that way you can monitor your prints either using the Dremel Cloud and there's also a way that you can actually monitor this with a web browser on your local network. The extruder mechanism is pretty robust. It's a pretty robust design. I'd say it's, a, I'd say it's pretty durable. It would definitely hold up to a lot of use. You can see of course. I mean the unit overall is actually built pretty well. Another nice feature of this printer is it has automated nine point leveling. So every time it actually starts a print, the first thing it does is it has a little switch that it pops out and it checks the distance between the nozzle and the print bed. It does this every time you do a 3D print. And also if leveling is not quite right, you can actually have it re-level the bed. And the way it works is it does a nine point check using the uh, leveling switch and if something is off it will ask you to adjust or lower these knobs. So I guess we can say it's not exactly 100% automated but it does make leveling a little bit easier than having to do it manually. In addition the spool holder is a substandard size. It does not fit a one kilogram size spool so when you do use third-party filament, you do have to build your own little holding platform and set your spool outside the printer. Now I should note that Dremel did eventually um, allow the use of third-party filaments without voiding your warranty. So that was a good step in the positive direction. And of course this here is a Dremel um, spool 
and it's 0.75 kilograms it's not even a full kilogram and these are pretty expensive um, the eco ABS for example I think runs 35 to 40 dollars for 0.75 kilograms whereas um, a full kilogram of the hatchbox PLA it's like 20 bucks generally it's a pretty common price for a kilogram I do believe the heat and nozzle on this 3D printer can go up to 280 degrees Celsius, and I believe the bed temperature can go up to, I think, 110 degrees Celsius. Also, I should note that this 3D printer is relatively old technology. This 3D printer here is actually six years old, roughly. If we look here, it was manufactured in August of 2017. So, definitely not brand new by any means, but we're gonna cover that more in a moment. So, Dremel eventually sold off its 3D printer business to 3PI Tech Solutions and licensed 3PI Tech to use Dremel's branding. So when you buy a Dremel Digilab 3D printer nowadays, you're getting one that's actually made by 3PI Tech Solutions. It just has Dremel's um, name slapped on the front of it. Now this one here is actually a genuine Dremel product. It is actually from when Dremel was making these things. So 3PI Tech Solutions, they're the ones who are offering the product, the materials, and the support. And I have found that parts for this device, they're pretty expensive. I mean, the unit overall is actually built pretty well, but let's go and talk about some of the negatives. So let's start with, of course, the bad. So one negative about this 3D printer is when it was first launched, you were essentially restricted to using Dremel's filament. If you used a third-party filament, you would essentially void your warranty. In fact, I do think the original firmware that came out on these Digilab 345 printers likely locked you from being able to use a third-party filament. If it didn't RFID detect a spool, then um, it would not let you use that filament. And as I mentioned previously, this 3D printer does have a USB um, port on the side to connect up to a PC, but the problem is Dremel never released a Windows driver for this product. So when you hook this up to a computer running Windows, um, Windows does not detect the device. Now normally you think, okay, just download a driver, but um, the issue is you can't seem to find a driver for it. And from my research, Dremel and 3PI Tech Solutions, who now um, actually sell these products, they never seem to, well, create a driver, which that's kind of an issue if you want to use this with your computer. And of course, your other option is to use a local area network, like Wi-Fi or Ethernet, or use a USB thumb drive to transfer your G-code over to the printer. Another issue is the slicer they provide for this product is based off an old version of Kira. So when you download and install Dremel's 3D Slicer, you're essentially running a roughly six-year-old copy of Cura, which is kind of an issue considering modern versions of Cura have new features, and other alternative slicers do have newer features. Now, you can actually use alternate slicers with this Dremel 3D printer. Um, for example, you can use newer versions of Cura when you actually install a third-party plug-in for the Dremel 3D printers and I believe you can also use Prusa Slicer among others and a recent discovery of mine is you can actually use Flash Forge's Flash Print Slicer with this thing unofficially but it does work matter of fact this 3D Benchy was sliced in Flash Print with the slicer set to um, slice for the Dreamer NX printer. Now although the extruder mechanism and nozzle on this unit are relatively robust. As I mentioned previously, parts are expensive and also some parts on this unit are kind of hard to work on. Um, for example, with Flash Forge, a lot of their 3D printers, you can easily change out the hot end, whereas on this unit it's a bit more complicated. Okay, so now that we have covered the good, we've covered the bad, now let's cover the absolute ugly about this 3D printer. This 3D printer is a ripoff. It is 
badly overpriced. I would highly suggest you not purchase this 3D printer solely based off of the price that 3PI Tech Solutions is asking for this printer. As mentioned, this is a six-year-old 3D printer. This one was manufactured in August of 2017. It was released according to Amazon back in July 2017. This 3D printer, as of today, November 20th, 2023, is $2,000, which is an absolute ripoff. I mean, for $2,000, you can get far, far, far better than this. I mean, there's so much, there's so many other options out there. You do not need to spend $2,000 on a 3D printer. I mean, for example, for I think $1,000 from FlashForge, you can get a much nicer 3D printer that offers dual extruders. And I mean, this is a single extruder 3D printer. It's, as mentioned, it's built relatively well, but it's old technology. It's six years old. And it's almost as if 3PI Tech Solutions, what they did is they took over um, this device. They licensed it from Dremel. They're still selling the same six-year-old product with no new innovation. It's just the same old, same old thing from 2017. Now, normally when a product comes out, it comes out at a relatively expensive price, depending on the product. But over time, as the product ages and gets, um, of course, replaced by newer technology, the cost of the product would generally come down. This has not seemed to have been the case with the Dremel. I mean, $2,000 is way, way, way too much money for this product. And the only time I would recommend you get one of these is if you can find it, like, dirt cheap. Like, somebody giving it away, which <laughs> you're probably not going to find that much considering how much it costs. But this product definitely, even all the nice things it has does not add up to being worth $2,000 to purchase brand new. I mean, the fact that, of course, it's kind of, you know, closed party. It uses Dremel filament, which they recommend you buy the Dremel filament. Now, it used to be, as I mentioned earlier, they required you to use Dremel filament to maintain your warranty. I mean, this thing does have a lot of nice functionality, but then again, it's six years old. It's definitely not worth $2,000. I mean... They charge $2,000 for this thing, yet they can't write a Windows driver for the thing. They can't provide you an updated slicer. I mean, there's so many things wrong here. And for that reason, I strongly recommend you do not buy this product. I mean, for $2,000, it's an absolute ripoff. I mean, for example, as I've mentioned, you can get much, much, much better products from FlashForge, from Creality, from Bamboo Labs, among others. I mean, back in 2017, the $2,000 price tag or the $1,800 price tag probably would have been, been more justified at that time because 3D printing was then a much newer technology than it is now. But $2,000 for a six-year-old piece of 3D printing technology is just not worth it. It's just not worth it at all. I mean, I, I did enjoy getting some time to mess around with this thing. And, you know, of course, 3D prints and stuff with it. But, um, no. For $2,000, just don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. For someone who is new to 3D printing, they, they tend to say that this thing is convenient for many reasons. It's um, easy to use, but I'm sorry. It's just not worth $2,000. So, anyways. That was the good and the bad and the ugly in regards to the Dremel Digilab 3D45 3D printer. So we are currently 30 minutes into our 3D Benchy and this is how things are looking so far. With everything being said, let's go ahead and wrap up this video with a look at the completed Benchy. So here's the benchy. And you can see 
I'd say for the most part it turned out pretty decent. Now the bottom, you can't really make out the logo because this thing, it, um, I think like the first or second layer didn't really print because I think the nozzle was so close to the base so that would probably be adjusted. But, I mean, otherwise, not too bad. So let's get a closer look at it here. So here's a closer look at the Benchy. I can definitely say that the DigiLab does do a decent job with uh, 3D printing for the most part. For all the different things I have printed on this thing, I've not had many failures. But uh, there you have it. So that is a look at this 3D Benchy. So anyways, hope you enjoy this video. Thanks for watching. Hey everybody. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video from Cuckoo Channel. If this is your first time, please subscribe to the channel and be sure to tick the bell so we can notify a new video post. Please like this video if you enjoyed it, leave a comment, and share this video as well as the channel with your friends and get the word out. Also, I have a second channel that's Comp MTDX. Over there you'll find videos about thunderstorms and weather, cycling, and videos about me personally. Feel free to subscribe over there as well if you like. Again, I really hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for your support.